Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. A bitch is back talking about books. It's been a long while. Where to start, honestly? Um, I didn't mean to take a break three weeks long, but it just ended up being so. The reason for that is I was trying to finish the books that I was reading. So I'm, you know, reading through the Throne of Glass series and I was doing the Tower of Dawn and Empire Storms tandem read and that was brutal. It was so hard to get through. It took me like two weeks to read that and I was like, okay, I don't want to really review other books. I want to get through these this series and focus on these books um, and I did that and it took me like a week and a half extra to do that and then I don't know if you guys watch a lot of my YouTube videos, but if you do, my wall looks very different. I'm cleaning my house. My mom, she went to Vietnam for the whole summer, and I didn't go with her this year. And basically, I'm taking... My mom is kind of a hoarder. We're gonna get into that. But yeah, I've basically just been trying to clean my house to the best of my ability and just throw out and donate things that like we really don't need because there's just so much it's like really insane to even describe so yeah I have been rearranging my wall so my posters my movie posters aren't usually where they are but I have kind of an idea of what I want this room to be so I am kind of changing it up I'm gonna put like anime posters and book posters over here once I get the money for it you know but yeah so there's that and then I went camping with my friends I'm going to put a vlog of that on my vlog channel which I should probably link down below if you guys want to follow my vlog channel and yeah, I also want to say that I do really read through all of the comments that I get, even though there's not an insane amount of them. I read them all, and I really, really, really appreciate every single one of them. And I really love the feedback and the response that I get when I get a new comment, and I see other people's opinions about the books that I'm reading, or maybe when people have different opinions than me, like saying what theirs is and respecting mine. And I really like that kind of, I don't know, that this can be like an open space and that's what I really wanted and that's why I created this channel. Like I have a lot of opinions. I'm an overshare, I'm an over talker and I really appreciate when I feel like I get that feedback. It feels like I'm uploading these videos and I feel like there's a sense of community there even though there's literally like I don't have a lot of subscribers, I really just do this for myself, but it really does feel nice. So I am very grateful for when people comment back on my my YouTube videos. Like I I sincerely mean this, like it means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. It's just kind of things that I wanted to get out of the way. And this video, what I wanted to talk about is the Throne of Glass series. So I did just finish the tandem reading for Hour of Dawn and Empire of Storms. I'm gonna start off by saying with this like talk about these books is I would not recommend reading them at the same time. Like I know everyone says do the tandem read like oh it's so fun to do the tandem read. It was so fucking hard okay it was so hard to do like I got so invested in one of the stories slash one of the books and mind you both books have different storylines within themselves you know I feel like a lot of fantasy series have that. Like if you know anything about the Throne of Glass series. Obviously, this is probably going to be a spoiler review. The characters' names change and all of that. Like, it's going to be a spoiler review. We're like five books into the series, okay? So, in the Empire Storms part of the tandem read, you follow the Elite. I'm going to call her Elite. I literally don't know how to pronounce any of these names, but like, whatever. Elite's and Lorcan storyline, and then there's a separate Manon storyline, and then there's a separate Aelin storyline, and a separate Dorian storyline. So there's four different storylines you have to follow within that book, and you get invested in certain ones more than others in that book. And then in the Tower and Dawn reading, you have the Kaol storyline, and Kaol and Nesrin's like storyline kind of like is the same until you get halfway through the book and then they split off and have two separate storylines within themselves. So it's really hard to be invested in literally seven different story arcs. There's a lot of people to follow, a lot of characters, and 
it's almost near impossible to be invested in every single one of those those side plots and that was my problem reading this so yes I wouldn't recommend reading these at the same time also I hate that I am very affected by book talk by YouTube by a lot of other people's opinions I am very affected by them and it does change my mind on certain things that I read and it is something that I do want to try to change within myself and like try to have my own opinion about stuff. I do follow other people's opinions. And so everybody said at the end of this Empire Storms that, oh my god, there's like a huge cliffhanger and like you just will want to keep on reading. And then same thing with Tower of Dawn, like there's just like a huge cliffhanger and it's gonna like, um, it's gonna spoil whatever happens in Empire Storms if you read Tower of Dawn first, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And in my head I was like, honestly, the cliffhanger wasn't that big of a cliffhanger in my opinion. Maybe I'm not super invested in this series. I think I was spoiled by a lot of the things that I saw on like TikTok and stuff. Like I was spoiled. Like I knew that Selena was, you know, not who she, she said she was. I knew who she was going to end up with. And I knew a lot of different plot points, kind of, before I went going into the series. I do have to say, it is a very enjoyable series. But I feel like because I was spoiled by some of those things, maybe I wasn't super invested in like, oh my god, like, I need to keep on reading. It, it just like leaves you on on the brink. There's such a big cliffhanger. It was not that big of a cliffhanger. Okay, next chapter. I think so many things happen in this book that... Everything is kind of a cliffhanger, you know, like you just kind of want to know what happens next. I honestly felt like Queen of Shadows had more of a cliffhanger type of thing. Crown of Midnight to, to Air of Fire was more of a cliffhanger than Empire Storms now going into King of Ash. Like, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but yeah, I feel like this book series is super, super, super hyped up, and I do have to say, I am not going to sit here and say it's a bad series at all, because I think Empire of Storms specifically, because I did read this in tandem, right? Empire of Storms specifically was so good in the way that there was such good payoff. Everything that happened from the beginning of Assassin's Blade, the beginning of Selena's story, all the way to now, all of the pieces just started falling into place. And to have that happen six books into the series is so satisfying because throughout the entire series, especially, especially in Throne of Glass, like that book was irking me because of how many questions it raised and you got no answers. It was kind of like watching Lost, you know? You kept going book after book, aka if you're watching Lost, season after season, keep having questions upon questions piling on top of each other with no answers, right? And this book, Empire of Storms, and parts of Tower of Dawn as well, I think did a really good job at revealing things and connecting things that was just so satisfying because I forgot a lot of the things, okay, that happened in The Assassin's Blade, even though that's one of my favorite books of the series. I would say so far one of the favorite books I have in this series is The Assassin's Blade and Queen of Shadows. Yeah, like those are my top two so far. But I think that I did still forget, like it was so long since I read Assassin's Blade, there were things in that book that I forgot. So when I was reading Tower of Dawn, Kaol, he was talking to Yuren, you know? And if you've read the book, spoiler alert, again I'm gonna say it, um, they end up getting together, Kaol and Yuren. Yuren kept talking about her past and saying like, oh, she met somebody, um, like she was a healer and she met somebody that saved her life and she was like being really vague about it and I was like that has to be Selena right like that has to be Aelin she's talking about that's not and I was so I was like so confused I was just thinking like why is this so familiar to me like why is what she's talking about so familiar to me but it's just not clicking like it just wasn't clicking in my head and then I read, she talked about this note, and I was like, why does that note sound so familiar? Was she talking about Caltain? 
it has to be Aelin, right? Like, that only makes sense. And then once they kind of revealed a little bit more, it all came flooding back to me. And I was like, K.O., you stupid son of a bitch. Like, literally, he was all up on hating about, like, oh, Selena did this, Aelin did that, like, he lied to him, yada, 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 trying to fix his legs and shit, like, going through his dark depression and, like, getting him out of the dark, right? Like, all of that was happening in this book. He was trying to progress as a character and, like, he was still hating on Aelin. It clicked to me, right? I was like, oh my god, she's literally talking about Aelin. It clicked to me. And then Chaos says something like, oh my god, whoever helped you get here to the healers in the Tower of Dawn area, whatever the fuck. I am so grateful for her, like, whoever that was that saved your life, I'm so grateful to, like, have you. Like, she gave me my future wife. I was like, hey, oh, you don't even know the half of it, boy. Like, you do not even know. And I loved how that clicked. And then with Tower of Dawn, the Nestoran storyline, having someone who was a shapeshifter connected to Lysandra, like, I don't know. It was just so satisfying. And I think that's the thing that I will give Tower of Dawn. Is that even though it wasn't my favorite, it wasn't as boring as everyone makes it out to be. Everyone's like, it's not good. Like, it's so boring. It's so bad. I will be honest. I kind of skimmed it because of that. Like, I genuinely just skimmed most of the book. But I got the big parts. And, but then the reveals and like the way that things connected were so satisfying to the series as a whole. I think it's not a boring read at all. Like I don't know what people are talking about. I am a hypocrite because I did skim it and I didn't actually read the whole thing back to front, but I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts with the tandem reading. I personally would do what other people say is like I wouldn't read it in tandem because there's just too many things going on at the same time. You just will start to not like either book reading them if that makes sense because you're just doing too much. If you can do that like by all means and honestly like even though it happens at the same time and there's a certain way you have to read it like oh read chapters one two three to three in Empire of Storms and then read four to five and this and this and that. Most of the events that happen within that don't actually really matter. There's only three big things that I think really matter that happen at the same time. But even though things are happening at the same time, if you keep, if you don't follow exact the exact reading guide, it's not really going to make much of a difference reading it as a whole. But yeah, I'm sorry. I kind of did ramble on. Those are my thoughts on um, the Empire Storms and Tower of Dawn tandem read. I am going to read Kingdom of Ash. I don't know when that will be, but hopefully soon. But yeah, I am excited to know how this story ends. I do think this is what everybody says it is. Like, it's a really, really good fantasy series and the plot is just really well done. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, there's just so many things about it when you think back you're like damn this is really good. But me being a romance girly I personally still yes I have a place in my heart for A Court of Thorns and Roses and there will always be a place in my heart for that and that will always be the book that got me back into reading and I will always like just feel like that that series is superior and that's just my opinion but yes please let me know your opinions down below in the comments thank you so much for watching the next reviews i'm gonna do there's gonna be a lot of them because after finishing the empire storms tower dawn tandem read i was like i need a breather i need to get back into romance and then i read three romance books in three days i spent my entire day reading and my eyes hurt from it. I woke up, I read, I fell asleep, I woke up, I read. And it was insane. I cannot believe I did that, but yes, I'm going to be doing reviews on those books next. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.